Plane crash on Grandfather's Mountain, North Carolina, sadly enough. Greetings, everybody. I'm your host, Stevie Garofalo. Welcome back to Reason for Truth, where the truth comes first and the reasons come last, but where we're always in constantly learning because when we stop learning, we stop teaching, or at least stop teaching well. Here, I want to help you cut through the fog of culture's distorted truth because in our relative world, the truth doesn't change, but the human will to distort the truth does. We cut through the distortion of current events with the truth of the Word of God, and we unveil the truth, the truth of God. Now, before we get started, let's make sure, by the way, go down there and smack that little alert bell down there. Then you give the old Sicilian hook to that alert bell. Then you'll just say, listen, you'll be fine, won't miss any episodes. Today's truth is that preparation is not only essential for our success, but can be detrimental to our health and even our life both here on earth and in eternality or eternity. All right, let's just jump right in with this short but very potent episode of Reason for Truth. I was on a two-day hiking camping trip with my son and his youth group up in North Carolina when we ran across the remains of a plane crash. It was kind of exciting for the boys at first, and you know we stumbled upon this adventure, but then reality set in for some of the boys. And listen, somebody died right inside that cockpit that we're looking at, inside that plane. As we descended down from the eight-mile hike, we were met uh, by really the park ranger along the way, and he explained to us that there were actually three plane crashes on Grand Father Mountain, which is fairly high for the East Coast at about 6,000 uh, feet. We're just 65 feet sh shy of 6,000 feet at the peak of Grandfather Mountain. What happened is the plane crash was around 5,000 feet. The ranger went on to say that the pilot was using his, bar his barometer instead of an altimeter to figure out his altitude. Now, I guess that wasn't uncommon in the 70s. People didn't have the sophisticated equipment that they have now. But listen, the uh, the equipment just wasn't sophisticated, and uh, it turned out to be fatal in this crash in 1978. And listen, I did some additional research in an article entitled Decades Later, Grandfather Mountain Plane Wreck, Still a Cautionary Tale. I like that title. Writer Luke Weir writes for TheMountainTimes.com. He says this on a rainy May afternoon, more than 40 years ago, a plane en route to Florida from Pennsylvania lost its way in rain clouds going over the high country of North Carolina. As a result, he was reduced to a mangled, really heap of metal near the top of Grandfather Mountain. The, the crash took the life of an unnamed pilot. He was 47 years old. He was a male. And as he crashed on May 5th, 1978. According to the flight report, uh, you can assess by way of the National Transportation Safety Board website. And factors that led to the fatal crash include low cloud ceiling, rain, and inadequate flight preparation. Very telling. The pilot was briefed by the incoming weather, but he persisted anyhow. Thank God, on the other hand, that there was no mountaineers, hikers, or campers, or backpackers where they were basically on the Daniel Boone Scout Trail while the, where the Cessna crashed in, in that area. Thank God for that, at least. But with no easy way or good reason to transport the wreckage off of Grandfather's precipitous eastern slope, the plane has sat in its place for many decades. And parts are scattered uh, ominously. And it tells really a tragic story when you look at the different pieces and you begin to say, there's another piece over here. But uh, telling this tragic story of bad judgment and perhaps bad weather and bad circumstances, I think there's a spiritual lesson for us here. One man wrote uh, in an article, in this, this same article, I hike up here to remind myself to slow down. Listen, he's fading and writing. People, I guess, write with marker, and it's red, it's fading away. But there's one thing that says life's highs are addictive, but there are consequences for mistakes. Very telling, very wise, very truthful. After thinking about the plane crash for some time, I tried to figure out how this tragedy could have been avoided or how it could be avoided in the future. And the ranger told us that they stopped routing people, by the way, over that part of the mountain. That's a good start point. But looking back to that fateful day in 1978, I came to the conclusion that the first error was that the pilot used a barometer as opposed to an altimeter, which pilots did sometimes back then. And I think about this in light of eternality, right? I think about all the people who used the wrong holy book to seek and worship God. Jesus said in, in John 14, 6, I am the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This, rem this reminds me that like using a false instrument such as a barometer uh, to, to do a reading for altitude leads one to a false you know, understanding of what the, what the altitude actually is, uh, at least in its reading. You know, the same thing is true with eternality. Speaking of false religion, false 
book, if you're reading anything other than the Bible, false salvation and false God does the same. Listen, a false uh, religion, a false God leads to a false salvation. Second error, I believe that the pilot was warned of incoming weather. I think it's a second er error he made. He was warned of incoming weather on low clouds, but he ignored the warning by the tower and he kept on his way. I'm sure, listen, coming from Pennsylvania, heading to Florida, he was wanting the sunny beaches as much as anybody else you know, did. Listen, the Bible has many words that, that caution and give warning to us about things that lie ahead. First, I think of um, uh, such as pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit uh, before fall. Proverbs 16, 18, Matthew 24, 42 says, therefore, stay awake for you do not know what day your Lord is coming. Ephesians 6, 11 warns us, says this, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. That's very telling, and it's very true in today's, I think, culture, where we see spiritual warfare at its height. Lastly, Proverbs 14, 12 tells us this, There is a way that seems right to a man, but in its end is the way of death. Listen, I'd submit that the tower was right, and the pilot, his way seemed right to him, but in the end, the pilot's way, in this instance, was inferior. It was wrong to that you know, as compared to the tower. He could, Listen, he could the tower could see above the clouds. He couldn't. Now, the third error was that the pilot was found to have had an inadequate flight preparation. You know, before you head off on a plane ride, you have to set out a pattern. It has to be in writing. You have to submit it. And he felt that he was experienced, that he was equipped enough to make, make it over the mountain. And as a result, you know, listen, he was 3,000 feet off in his belief where he was at. He thought he was 3,000 feet higher when he wasn't. And that's what caused the crash. He actually, as a result, he found himself in the trees at around 5,000 feet, ripping off the wings and causing sudden death upon landing, right? Very sad. For us today that are living, I'm reminded that God's Word tells us in 1 Peter 3.15, But in your hearts, honor Christ as Lord is holy. Always be, always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, okay? Listen, yet do it in gentleness and respect. We often forget the last part. Proverbs 22, 3, by the way, says, The prudent man sees danger and hides himself, but the simple go on and suffer for it. 2 Timothy tells us in chapter 4, Preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Perhaps had the pilot been better prepared in bad weather as he, as he was in good, he still be here with us today. Remember, today's truth is that preparation is not only essential for our success, but it can be detrimental to our health and even life-saving or life-taking. Life holds a lot of adventure and challenges for us folks, and if we seek the wonders of the Lord that He's created in this beautiful thing called earth, and He gave it to us to enjoy, you know, we should seek His Word first and His wisdom first. Be prepared. This tragedy, you know, ought to remind us, uh, let's listen, to remain ever vigilant be prepared to meet the physical and the spiritual battles, the triumphs and the challenges and the mission challenges that lay ahead. But with great biblical preparation at the wisdom that God gives us, and this is your sober reason for truth for this day. Now, please leave your comments below. I know this is a little bit sober. I promise to respond within a very reasonable amount of time. And if you want a more in-depth training that mixes apologetic with theology and Bible, please check out our new online training academy at equippedacademy.com. For additional resources, you can see reasonfortruth.bible. It's F-O-R, for truth, reasonfortruth.bible, reasonfortruth.org. We just uploaded an episode, by the way, on apathy. I think I told you about that before. You want to check that out. There's a number of good episodes that kind of tie in to the things we're dealing with in culture today. You don't want to miss that. And I provided a link down below for you. If you're listening on podcast or by way of video, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Give the old Goncio Sinistro, which is the old Sicilian left hook. Listen to that little bell below. At that time, Maria might come out, say hello to you. Maybe she'll bring you some bread. It's different between Italian bread and French bread. See, French bread's skinny and long. Italian bread's a little more robust, a little fat. My, as my grandfather used to do, you dig in there. I love my grandfather. Wait, to, can't wait to see him in heaven when I go there. I'm not going any faster than I need to. But he used to dig in there with little fingers. Grandmother be yelling at him. That's not healthy for the boy. Inside of that bread's delicious. So if you have an Italian, a little pizzeria or something, you get yourself some bread. I'm talking about a real Italian restaurant, not the chains. You get in there, that inside of that bread, it's like heaven on earth. Anyways, 
Just trust me. Hit that alert bell, subscribe button. Until next time, I'll see you for the next episode of Reason for Truth. I'm your host, Stephen Garofalo, and this is your Reason for Truth for today. <music>